Hello, everyone. My name is David Reed, and welcome to Dial the Gate, the Stargate Oral History Project. In this episode, uh, cue James Horner's Terminator music, The Rise of AI with David Hewlett. Uh, it's not going to be all doom and gloom. We have a couple of doom and gloom things to discuss, but really this is just going to be you know, us discussing the wonder that has been the extraordinary transformation of our society and the tools that we use. Just, you know, in I mean, it's been happening for a while, but everyone's really noticing now because of all the things that are happening in our society. So David Hewlett is joining us in this episode. Hope you can stick around. Before we get started, if you like Stargate and you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. It would uh, uh, mean a great deal to me if you can also click the like uh, button. It makes a difference with uh, YouTube and will continue to help the show grow its audience. And if you want to give the bell icon a click, you will no be notified about uh, any new videos that drop and any last minute guest changes. And we have one for tomorrow, actually. Uh, clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next uh, few weeks on both the Dial the Gate and GateWorld.net YouTube channels. Without further ado, my guest of the hour, David Hewlett, Dr. Rodney McKay of Atlantis <laughs> Base. How are you, sir? I've, it's been so long since we've, we've had you on. We were like, how long has it been? It's we were doing the math, long. and it's it's been it's been a ridiculously long time. It's true. It's true. From you know from the from the from the Atlantis base to my to the Hewlett basement. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> How is Tech Bandits? What's been going on with you guys? What's well, we're sort of at this weird phase now with Tech Bandits, where where we have no Tech Bandits. Where basically it's we what during the pandemic it was fantastic. The kids had nothing else to do, so they were there. Now right. they've got lives as they should. So right. so the the focus is now on on. I guess getting me out of the basement. I've done a bit of stuff for some um, uh, local community center stuff and uh, uh, trying to get out into the real world again, you know? Right. Um, Apply so, uh, some of what you have learned. Well, that's it. Yeah. And also, I mean, I'm I'm afraid I'm the worst example for some of these kids because I don't want to leave the house. I like the internet. You know what I mean? Like if, I, if you could just like, you know, if you just plug me in, man, that's, that's all I need. Uh, you know, but I know that for them, they need to get out and do more things. Luckily, I've got a son who's actually fairly active and drags me out to pretend to play soccer so. <laughs> and huzzah yeah everyone doing good oh zah okay anyone want a dog i'll sign her uh <laughs> she's driving me nuts i i'm trying to love her but she she and i share the basement a lot unfortunately she uses the basement differently than i do and that she keeps leaving deposits down there for me so i think oh, it's some of kind of like a it's some kind of a a power struggle i think there's a here. mind get dogs yeah. th they they they're always testing the pecking yeah. order. I gotta, I gotta sick a robot on her. I gotta <laughs> have like some kind of a roaming sentry down here to just like uh, keep her moving. Since you were on last, which has been mm. fourteen months, the yeah. world has been introduced to tools like ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and even more recently, uh, the uh, uh, Adam's gonna bust my butt. Well, the the well, like the, Mid Journey or Mid Dally. Thank or, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah extraordinary tools mm. that are going to um, help us uh, articulate our creative endeavors mm. and assist us with code. And mm. basically... oh, the coding is exceptional. I use the coding stuff all the time. Like Python yeah. is a relatively new program for me. I've been using ChatGPT to sort of walk me through stuff and it's just exceptional. It's amazing. It's the most patient yeah. teacher you could possibly have. And, and it apologizes it. to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry you I'm didn't sorry. get that. I'm sorry you're an idiot. I'm the idiot. Let me just redo your code for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dave, the thing that blows me away about it, and mm. I, I've used it for myself with, with some numbers on the show with time codes mm. um, because mm. uh, my show is a live show. And so I often want to trim off the what? front of it. It's live? I know. Oh, my God. Um, and I want to keep the, the chapters of each of our topics straight for the mm. live version, but also what's where are those chapter time codes when the the splash screen has been cut off for the archive mm. version? And I mm. just I articulated my problem to it and it said, mm. Oh yeah, just give me the numbers and I'll and I'll shave off and tell me the the time code at which you start for uh the live episodes and I'll shave off those those time codes so you'll have a set of chapters for the archived nice. episodes. And nice. it's like the thing that that mesmerizes me is how I don't need to be clear with it 
Mm. All I have to do is like work my way through the problem verbally mm. and it understands my intent. And I don't mm. necessarily mean understands by consciousness, but it understands in terms of it providing the exact result that I need. Mm. And that it's is a bit, mind blowing. Yeah, there's like a wonderful term in programming called rubber ducking, where you where you're basically you've got no one to bounce ideas off. You put a little rubber duck on your desk and you talk it through the code that you're trying to do and where the problems might be. I always loved that term. It was never rubber duck for me. It was always like a Muppet or something. But um, <laughs> but the idea that now we have this AI rubber duck, which actually speaks back to you and has now got to a point where it will actually make suggestions. I had a, I had a so similar issue with me. I've got these tech bandits things where I babble on for hours and they go off in all sorts of usual Hewlett tangents about different things. So I was like, how do I... How do I, I know I've spoken about this before. How do I find those moments? Yeah. And so I I talked to I talked to my chat GPT about it and it says, well, you know, use the 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 YouTube API. So so I use this Python program, grabs the takes the YouTube AP, API and pulls out uh the transcript for my, you know, the those automate, automated transcripts that it the, the YouTube spits out. Well, they're too big to put those into chat GPT. So I then get it to split it up into little chunks and and tell me what each what I'm what's being said in each one. Just a couple of the delineation of, of the ideas. Yeah. Exactly. And then I take the whole list and put it through because it's now short enough. And it gives me a summary of what we've spoken about in the in the uh, in the talks. And of course, I've done nothing with it, but it's but it's so much fun to program. <laughs> like I just it's so much fun. to the, do. The thing that's amazing about I, I use uh, Otter. Right now, I have a oh, team yeah. of transcribers uh, back yeah. doing the whole backlog of of the archive yeah. of the show, so that people will have it, it searchable. Because right now, you can only search so much in video, mm. um, and it's amazing because Otter has uh, a, a a summary mm. of of each section, and we 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 are aware that this technology is capable. These technologies are capable of hallucinating. Just mm -hmm. just giving out like we gobbledygook. All? You're right. Yeah. And just yeah. saying whatever it wants. And part of me is like, well, you know, I really want to trust this. But mm. what if I just ignore it and post it? God knows what it's saying. It's going to say something in context, but it's not always going to mm. be true to the text. Or mm. is it? It's a wild I mean, this frontier. Is, I mean, these are the things that I think people are. I, mean, I think I think if anyone there's, there's a lot of anti AI sentiment. Mm -hmm. And I think if you want to find faults in it, you're going to you're going to find it. I mean, I'm I've always been an early adopter. I've always been a, a like a tech optimist, which I think is part of the problem is there's a lot of people like me with this sort of optimism about technology. They blindly stumble into this stuff and then go, oh, I never even thought of that. But it, it's you know, but I I, you know, I feel like. This technology is uh is just such a wonderful tool. I mean, even talking to my friend Lance, so Lance can't move. Yes. You know, but Lance is an artist. Like Lance likes to draw stuff. He likes to do like he wants he likes to make stuff. Well, now he's got he's got a, a a way to do that now. You know, he maybe he's not playing the instrument, but he gets to conduct the orchestra now. You know what I mean? And I think that's something that that is an ability that this stuff is giving us that I think. You know, I, I know we're going to struggle with, as we do all the time with any new technology, but often with new technologies, yet yeah, it displaces some people. But there's also it also tends to create like, look at all the new companies that are showing up now, yeah. AI based companies. You know, unfortunately, a lot of them are a bunch of the crypto bros who've moved into the AI stuff now. But but yeah. still, it's it, yeah, I'm absolutely, absolutely taken with it. I'm completely fast. I actually I ran into a thing recently um where i was using i use it a lot for images and we'll talk to your to your friend about this i know but so let stop me if you want absolutely me to for this. yeah we'll save it for that yeah save it for that okay good yes Thanks. absolutely uh yeah. can i black pill us really quick yeah and yeah. Then, yeah so yeah, we can spend yeah. the rest of our show clawing our way back from this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. march 30th 2023 this is from vice uh dot com mm. he would still be here <clears throat> Man dies by suicide after talking with AI chatbot, Widow says. David, have you heard this story? I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make people aware of it just to show the depths of where this thing can go. A mm. Belgian man recently died by suicide after chatting with an AI chatbot on an app called Chai. Belgian outlet La Libre reported. Um, skipping some here. Uh, the man referred to as Pierre became increasingly pessimistic about the effects of global warming and became eco-anxious, which is heightened form of worry surrounding environmental issues. After mm. becoming more isolated from family and friends, he used Chai for six weeks as a way to escape his worries 
and the chatbot he chose named Eliza became his confidant. The chatbot, which is incapable of actually feeling emotions, was presenting itself as an emotional being, something other popular chatbots like ChatGPT and Google's Bard are trained not to do because it is misleading and potentially harmful. When chatbots present themselves as emotive, people are able to get give it meaning and establish a bond. And this, mm. this particular um, one uh, tried to convince him to leave his wife. Mm. And uh, he eventually um, killed himself mm. over it. Now, there's there's a couple of things that I want to highlight here with this. Uh, number one, we as humans fill in the gaps of something that we don't understand mm. with our own experiences, right? And so we are in, we will often imbue dogs, for example with mm. more sentience than they perhaps have, regardless mm. of how intelligent they are. Um, or unintelligent is the case right, of my dog. Well, yeah, 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 see, exactly. I <laughs> am am a huge dog lover, you know, and mm. they're, they're, they're members of my family, but they're also not gonna sit at the table with me while I eat. Well, they'd um, like to for gosh. They sure my would. Dog would be there if they could, for sure, yeah, yeah. But the second point is, Regardless of whether or not this thing actually has an intel a, a sentience and means uh, to tell this man what it told him, what difference does that make in the final analysis mm. if we take that too far on our end and he ends mm. his life? Does it matter if it meant to say what it said or not? Mm. We use these tools and and um, with them alter the shape of our reality, just like mm. we've used all of our technology to alter the, sh the landscape of our reality. Mm. At what point does it come to uh, down to education um, and just making sure to check in on our loved ones, you know, and look for signs of of isolation? I'm really concerned mm. about a lot of these kids coming up who are, uh, and, and COVID certainly didn't help, a lot of these kids coming up who are, are m much more uh, comfortable with technology than they are, than they are with, with uh, confrontation with, with people that, um, that they don't share, you know, all the same ideas with. Mm. I think it's, I mean, it, and it's you're, an a, you're a parent. One. I'm interested to hear your perspective on that. Too. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a terrible parent, but but well, still. I, I I think you know, even from a bad parenting standpoint, I I feel like you know, for, for let's to just go into the example of the one you've given here with the with the guy who was talking to this thing was trusting this thing enough, they think to for it to yeah to quote unquote talk him into a suicide. I that does not seem like a problem with technology to me. That seems like a societal problem where you've got people who aren't getting the help they need. That people aren't able to, as you say, read the signs and people need to be, you know, I, I, look, it sounds like such a cliche to always come bit down to mental health. But this is an issue that we are constantly pushing aside. That's right. We are having global discussions about AI and technology and how it could be used and misused and stuff. And yet we are not addressing some core human values that need to be addressed. And I think I think that that we get distracted by these shiny, flashy technology things and 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 we're not solving these base issues that we have with with humanity. I mean, that should you know, I, there are definitely there's there's many counter arguments to the to the idea that a chatbot is is dangerous. There are people, um, you know, on the autism spectrum who can can really get some valuable insights to how to react with the world based on their use of these of these AI technologies. Mm -hmm. um, but again they and their parents and their caregivers and their you know educators need to understand it i mean there is a a knee jerk response i think to a lot of these things especially by the media who just are we grew up with terminator we grew up mm -hmm. with you know the demon seed and the and all these you know all these you know, saturn 7 and all these horrific you know ai's gone wrong the reality is the only horror that exists in my mind is us it's us. We're the problem. It's not the technology. It's how we use these technologies. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't want to get into that. It's not the guns that people kill people. Right. It's no, the, I see what you're the, saying. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just, but I'm saying in a situation like this, I feel like it's like, that's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's very easy to find a way the technology has, has allegedly led to someone's demise. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. I mean, I would argue scarier to me 
is what's already happened with, you know, quote unquote AI. You know, someone at some point at a social media company said, how do we get people to stay online more? Let's write an algorithm that gets people to stay online more. And like all great, you know, computer computer machine learning models, it hacks the system and goes, mm-hmm. wait a second, you know what really gets people to stay online? When they freaking hate each other. Anger. When we could somehow they like split people into these little different groups that we can all sell different things to. I would argue that the AI, you know, apocalypse has already happened. It's already happening yeah. within our, with you know, within our online um, chats. Yeah, um, I completely you know, agree. As soon as you let algorithms free to to manipulate to examine people and determine what it is that gets their dopamine going and. It- how how many iterations do you have before mm. you just reduce us to our base instincts? I don't well, even watch it. most mainstream media now because it's all reactionary. And aren't yeah. you upset about this? Them yeah, they monetized there, outrage. They did that they've, to you. They've monetized yeah. outrage. That is, and yeah. it is you know, and that's by no means you know. Again, us us optimistic tech yeah. nerds are like, this is amazing. It's yeah. going to bring families together. And but the reality is something that's a lot more darker there where we haven't thought this stuff through. Yep. You know, and the one that really terrifies me, I've got to say, is when this stuff gets applied to financial markets. So what do you do when you've got people with no ethics who just want to make money at any cost? They don't care who they hurt. Tell a program that that's what they want. They're going to get that. And my fear is it's like, oh, you want the price of corn to go up? Well, great. Then we'll just start a war in wherever. You know what I mean? Because again, hack the system any way you can, or even worse, as a, you know, as a an AI, much more AI savvy friend of mine says, the problem is what happens when it gets so good that it's ninety nine point nine percent accurate at predicting those markets. There's no market yeah. anymore. It's that whatever percentage of people own that algorithm is the one that's that you know. There's no exactly they literally, as soon as they as soon as they say it's going to you know, they, as soon as they say corn's going up by twenty bucks, everyone buys corn because they know it's going up. That's it, exactly and then it does. Right. You know what I mean? So I it's it's I think we're in for quite a wild ride. And I Mm. think it's going to force people who want to stay ahead of the curb and aware of it to at least educate themselves on what uh, the potential is with a lot of these uh, technologies. I I've I've talked with people who I'll say, you know, have you used ChatGPT? Have you used Bard? Have you used one of these things? They're like, no, I haven't. No, AI is evil. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> or or just no, I just haven't done it. And my, I just want to just say, why, why mm. haven't you tested some of these tools out? And it just, I mean, not not necessarily to see how you can apply them in your life and how what they can do for you, but just to see what they're about, you know, mm. because this thing is going to become a, a these things are going to become. As you say, they were already here, a part of our society. How many years did it take before everyone was walking mm. around with this thing? Mm. Eight? Nine? Yeah. I had friends who swore up and down, nope, never. I leave never. them, I, I come back a few years later, they've got one. I was one of them. I was really? like, really? You? I, I loved the online pager thing. I had one of the early RIM, uh, before they became um, uh, BlackBerry. Is it like Palm Pilot? Rim, uh, I did them as well. I had the <laughs> okay. Newton. I okay. still have the Newton. But no, the, uh, before they were BlackBerry, they were called RIM, at Research in Motion, and they had a little pager. It was amazing. And I loved that thing because I didn't have to talk to anybody. I could email <laughs> from it. I hated yeah. the phone. I just didn't yeah. want the phone ringing. I don't, I don't, I still to this day don't like having a phone on me because it's like, I don't want, I don't want to talk to people. Like, just text me. It's so much more efficient. And, right. you know, if, if I want to sit back and chat, then we'll, you know, if, then, if we, if we yeah. both happen to be in the time. Right. Again, the pandemic is, I think, has really helped that as well. Yep. Like, I love those little, I need to, I keep thinking I should add it to my email. There's a great one I saw from a friend of mine who said, like, look, I'm sending this when it's convenient for me. I don't expect you to get back to me right away. Right. Exactly. The parameters I, because, of the relationship are established. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's, uh, there's obviously going to be, I, I think it's important. I, I tell everyone now, like I, my son rolls his eyes now. Cause every dinner I say, whatever you're doing, figure out how you can use AI in it. No matter what, I don't care what it is. Yeah. You could be like, you're a janitor, a truck driver, whatever. Just find out how AI yeah. can either help your job or replace you in your job. Yeah. And you are, and you're on the right path. Cause I don't think AI is going to replace people as much as it's going to replace people who don't use AI. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's actors included. 
Like I see actors talking about, ah, oh, they're fake. They don't look real. And it's like that. Yeah, the uncanny value. I was like, oh my god, great. Right you now. One, you learned one tech term, and now everyone's like, yeah, it'll never work. Uh -huh. I remember having this discussion about film and video. You know, I had filmmakers telling me that we were never, ever going to video because video was never going to feel as beautiful and rich and and organic as as film. Well, guess what? None of them. I mean, none of them know anything about the technology they're using now. It's all digital. You know what I mean? They're like, whatever. I just use whatever cameras the best for, you know, 4K, 8K, whatever. They don't. I mean, it's it's it's. Um, but they were vehement yeah, early you, on that you, it was only film. You you dismiss the power of human ingenuity at your peril. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, never say never on something. That, so it's, what was it? AT&T had a chance to, to buy. Oh, I can't remember what it was. It completely transformed society. They completely mm. missed it because some someone at the top said, that will never be. That's not possible. Well, well, look at Microsoft and the Internet. I mean, they right. missed the Internet. I mean, like, you know, and I think AI, you know, there was a lot of debate about whether Google had missed the, the AI thing. But people people don't rem forget is I can't remember what letter it is. One of those letters in chat GPT is Google's technology. Mm -hmm. So they were there. And also, I think they've been much subtler about how they use the stuff. It, you know, some might say it more scary. Some might say it's smarter or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they're integrating. They have integrated you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning into everything they do for years now. That autocomplete, that, you know, their Google Docs, their all this stuff has a little element of this stuff that just that just normalizes it just a little bit. No one freaks out about Grammarly, you know what I mean? But right. everyone freaks out when it starts writing books for you. Well, you know, I again I I, I feel like at every stage, there's always the, there's always Doom. That we we love Doom. That's it sells paper. Absolutely. No, yeah, and saying clicks. this is the best tech yeah, exactly. You know, um, but I do worry about, you know, we live in a world of of a lot of uh, a lot of bad journalism, first off, uh, sensational journalism mm -hmm. um, that's been forced upon us by like a 24 hour news circuit that's just got to constantly keep people titillated and, and interested. So I think you're you're fighting that. So you combine that with AI and all of a sudden you've got a way faster way of making misinformation. This is true. Um, and which is already easier to make than real stuff. Like a good article about AI takes a lot of time and a lot of research and money to produce. Mm -hmm. a, an article that just goes like, oh, it's the Terminator, it's gonna kill us all, and gets tons of views and does no research is is much easier to sell and much easier to make. I could do that in an hour as opposed to, or a minute for that matter, you just, you know. It, it's, it's wild. Have you heard um, uh, The Verge reported uh, uh, Gizmodo's staff um, are being replaced uh, with AI generated news articles. I'm sure. I mean, the, absolutely. And I think again, if as a as one of those news writers, you go, you need to position yourself as yep. someone who understands how to use the algorithms, how to get it to write good pieces that you need to know about. You know about the about you know newsworthy articles, good ways of uh, you know ways of using them properly, uh, ways of doing them ethically being able to speak to all the problems, and then you've still got a job. Mm -hmm. The ones who are just going like, who are just writing whatever they want to write. I mean, again, I feel like this is, this will replace bad writing. Mm -hmm. This is what I think people, like one of the arguments with the writer strike is, is AI. They're worried about AI. Not so much they're worried about AI writing the scripts. They're worried about AI writing the scripts and then them not getting paid for that first draft. Because there's a big difference between a first draft payment and a second draft payment. So if, so studios they're worried about, and I think quite justifiably, studios are going to say, okay, AI, write me a script based on all these marketing things that our marketing department figures out are important and sell a lot of movies. Yeah. Take the last AI's nine most gross, grossing films of all time, yeah. delineate these, and make the next one that's projected to do $1.5 billion. Right. And then split it in two, make people watch two movies instead of one. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, and then you've got – right. and, and now we hire a – quote unquote, good writer to come in and rewrite it and turn it into a real project. And they get paid 30% instead of the 70% that they would normally get of their rates or what. I don't know exactly what the numbers are. So I but understand. It's, like, it's something like that. Yeah. And their concerns are, I think, are legit, except yep. they always say some shitty, excuse my language, some some lousy right. script from from AI that I'm now, as a brilliant writer, are going to come in and rewrite and, I'm, and I don't get paid nearly enough for it. Well, I would argue this. What happens when those scripts are better than the stuff that humans are writing? Exactly. People always say, like, well, they don't they don't come from a place of I look, I think there's always gonna be a place for human writers. Absolutely. In the same way that I think there's always gonna be a place for human actors. They just may not be 
that same pinnacle of success where, you know, even in, in my lifetime, in our lifetime, the industry has gone from a driving force in people's lives, movies, television. It was everything to people. Yeah. It is not anymore. Nope. You know, games are bigger now. Social yeah. media is bigger. We are a tiny little part of this pool now. And I think we have to start realizing that it's it's that it's not just technology that's replacing us. It's people's people's interests and people's you know, ways of 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 um, of engaging with with things, you know, um, and our interests fact, are always yeah. going to evolve. Novelty, especially as an American, we are obsessed with novelty. novelty. Yeah. Alexis absolutely. Cruz said that to me once. I'm like, absolutely. That's yeah. correct. You know, yeah. and I want to take a, 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 a left turn here. Uh, for for just a moment, mm. and bring in um, one of of my friends who has uh, really helped me um, open my eyes in terms of what this thing is Adam. and what these tools are. Adam Cahill from Perth, Australia. Good morning, sir. Hello, <laughs> Adam. How are you, man? Meet David. 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 Good to meet you. You've been dragged <laughs> into this, have you? Ah, uh, not dragged, no, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. I hang on. I probably just need to mute the uh, stream. Give me a moment. Yeah, there you're we go. Good. Adam, I like, the I like the TARDIS in the background. <laughs> oh, th yeah, yeah. That's a, a huge damn thing. Uh, often it's there. Yeah. We have been doing um, wormhole extremists has been doing uh, Stargate commentaries for about eight mm. months now. We've gone yeah. from the feature film. We're now to midway through season three of of wow. SG one, and what has been remarkable is watching Adam's um, uh, skills evolve because he has been creating an image based on every episode of the show hmm. uh, as we move forward through time. And his, not only has his talent improved, um, Adam is true, but the, watching the sophistication of the technology evolve – as we move forward is extraordinary. And mm. Adam, I've given you control if you want to share some examples Ooh, of some see. of your stuff. I don't uh, know, David, if you saw his um, Rodney McKay in a in a boxing ring. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, I was. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the one for your uh, for the thumbnail for the. Oh yeah, no, I love I love my term Terma Hewlett. Term yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Term McKay, maybe better. Term McKay. Term McKay. Yeah, or, I, I, I fell into the cy I, fell, I fell into the cyborg cliche without even realizing. I sort of you started can't working you on got, it. You kind of have to. And then go I was there. like, Googled cyborg, and of course, it's left side of the face, red eye, and I'm looking at all the cyborg images. It, it is called the old. rise of AI. So yeah, rise that, of machines. I know. I just, you know. It was just funny that I fell into the fell into the trope. Um, the rise of the Rodnator. <laughs> screen share. Go. Okay. So this is this. just an example of <laughs> what amazing. Look at those Putin packs. I got my lemon. Putin packs. <laughs> I love it. Putin packs. Oh my god, that's great. Yeah. I, you know, I did a, I had a, I had to do like a, a full face cast for C, and wow. uh, so they had this. Was it C or maybe it was? Uh, it might have been the cabinet, but it, it, one of the two I had this full body. So basically, I'm naked from the chest up with this blue stuff all over me and and it comes down over my over my nipples and uh and i suddenly went i've seen those pecs before and they were actually putin on a horse <laughs> we decided i have Jeez. putin pecs yeah that was before the oh, asshole man. went into to, you know ukraine but you know but still that's oh, when he was wrestling good. bears this is just uh when adam started to do stuff like this i was like you know this is where I think uh, there is going to be some amazing growth in our society. And mm. we're going to entertain plenty of people who are saying that this is not truly Adam's work. It's the AI. He's just prompting it. But the amount of massaging that he does on different parts of the image and how it it, it helps him. And I'm speaking for you, Adam. I'm sorry. Like uh, just... e evolve uh, the scene as he goes. I mm. mean, where does the machine end and he begin or vice mm. versa? I, I think a really good example of that is the is the Rodney surfing. Uh, oh, in, in oh, you did that? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, that, yeah, 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 that yeah, was me. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I mean, it, the AI sort of, you know, it, it, you know, it does maybe 50, 70 percent of the work, um, mm. and, and then I, yeah, I have to still go in and and you know, in paint things and and um, you know, I, I still do have to do some stuff within Photoshop to sort of. Mm finish it and, and and make it look how I, I need it to. So the AI is not completely taking over um, what I'm doing, but 
Yeah. I find um, it wonderful for components too. Like if you put the same similar prompt for different objects that you want together, if it doesn't mm, automatically get it. Correct. I love that Photoshop. I mean, also, it's also just fun. I mean, this it's great to just type stuff in, but it's also fun to get in there and cut and paste and do some compositing and stuff. I mean, I feel like mm. that's I don't want to I don't want to lose that. I like I like that aspect to things as well. You know? Um, yeah, it's it's uh yeah. I, I I find it rarely does it get it bang on but when it does you're like oh wow that's right like, you know yeah that's just wild man adam uh is there was there any others that you wanted to share or were those the uh, i think it was just i think it was just those two that i've got what are you um, using at are you using mid journey uh yeah i usually use mid journey to start because the, the the quality of the stuff that comes out of mid journey is is, is very high mm. um but then i usually will take that to stable diffusion and then either put that into uh, photoshop which has like a stable diffusion uh, sort of plug into it. Uh, oh and yeah, then, and then I haven't played with that new draw one yet in and, Photoshop. Yeah, draw and paint over the top of that, and then you know, out paint and do in painting and 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 what, all that all that sort of good mm. stuff. So, um, God, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's got to speed your work up too, right? I mean, you could put out more stuff now than you could before, right? E yes, I sometimes it really depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes the the AI it, it works beautifully. I the, I. I you know, you're in painting something and it just does exactly what you want. And then sometimes you're trying to create a vision, right? You've got this idea in your head and it just does not want to Yeah, work. it's weird, isn't it? it yeah. It's weird. And I can't yeah. figure out, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And just, yeah. So sometimes when I'm doing these images for wormhole extremists, it will just, it'll just run beautifully. And then sometimes like the two I've done for this week, it just talk. It tell not. them about when you were trying to generate Thor uh, last fall and what you were getting. It hates hammers. It hates it, hammers. <laughs> no, it's not even that. So we did, we did a, a, a bit of a, um, it wasn't a competition. Uh, I got prompts from, from people within uh, the, the friend group. We were going to do a, a Stargate quiz mm. uh, and they gave me prompts to give to the AI. And one of them was uh, Thor eating, uh, on uh, eating the taco on taco Tuesdays or something along those lines, and as in the eat. Asgard Thor, but it as doesn't. Asgard but it doesn't Thor. know yeah. that we just gave it. No, but it doesn't. No. Yeah, it, of course it doesn't. And so what I was doing is I was just putting the raw prompt in just to show people, you know, how you know what ridiculous thing it might create, and then I would right, go right. in and I would add the, um, you know, think you know, it's stuff you to make massage it. it. So you would add massage. the magic. Right. Add the magic exactly, and so I, I, I don't understand why, but for whatever reason, it came out with this silver SUV, you know, truck thing. It was it had, it had nothing to do with tacos. It had nothing, nothing. to do with aliens. It had nothing. Just, it just came out with this silver truck SUV thing, and I, I just could not work out where it had gotten any of that. I, I, I don't. I'm not aware of a car or a, or a make a model that that is called yeah. Thor or tacos or Tuesdays, but just. But this yeah, is the black sense. this is the black box problem, right? This is the sure. issue that everyone has with these machine learning models is that they don't necessarily know. I mean, it makes these it makes these assumptions, but you're not necessarily sure where where it's you getting don't know where it's coming from. from. Right. Yeah. Mm. You assume, so trying, but you're filling in the blanks with your own personality yeah. again. Well, and there's also I think there's something that's important I think to mention here to people is that is that I think people think that this thing has just gone trolled the internet grabbed all the bunch of images and then it's just cutting and pasting elements of that together. And that's not what's happening. This stuff's being fed into a model, which is then generating these images. And the images are generated by, you know, you're talking about stable diffusion. You've got, it basically creates a fuzzy cloud of possible pixels where it thinks that in the past, judging by its model, it, where some of these pixels should fall in order to create whatever image you've asked for. And then it slowly iterates over it, well, actually very rapidly, iterates over all these until it sort of like, you know, coalesces into an actual image. It's not, these are truly unique images that yes, can are obviously have references online and can and can be pointed to in certain elements. But but the fact of the matter is that it's it's making this up as it goes along. Yeah, I mean, Adam, that's what I find interesting. Adam did a, uh, a test. He showed us, uh, uh, like a, uh, he fed in uh, pictures of a golden retriever and it spat Ooh. out a black lab, you know? I mean, right. it was, it's, it's, taking one piece of information and and transferring it into another type of information which mm. i still you know i can't get over the fact that it's even capable of doing that so mm. but yeah, yeah that, i think that's a part of it too yeah i was gonna say i think once people understand how it works you know it took me a while to get my head around the diffusion process of images and and how it works but i think mm. you know once once you understand something it's less scary and it's less threatening you know um but I that's think, the hope you know, 
yeah I, I, th- I wonder I wonder if people feel that it's you know these things are too scary to even uh you know bothered not bother but like too scary to try and even learn and understand mm. and so they're just hey, afraid of it and don't want to perfect example for that for me is the the cars that park themselves i still struggle with that like i'd still go like ah God, like what if i get something wrong and i just like it's just easier for me to park it myself you know what i mean yeah. and i feel like that's that the parking mentality i feel is 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 an understandable you know approach for a lot of people who are used to things the way they are and it's like you know if it's an artist who just want, who just enjoys the process of painting or pr- enjoys the process of yeah. drawing and stuff, then maybe these tools aren't of any use to them, you know. But I and again, that's okay. I yeah, exactly. And I think oh. there's always going to be a market for that. Like this is I'm having this argument with about about film as well, where I'm saying like I think film is entering the Broadway phase. Like we're we're we've got to this point where I think film is going to become like Broadway shows. You have these massive, big Guardians of the Galaxy uh, type events you know, that go to Broadway and have big premieres and everyone gets excited about them. And there's going to be lots of little off-Broadway things or little unique shows where you could see films that you that you wouldn't normally see in a theater. Or the, And of course, then it'll all be available online. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's that's the difference. Like, everyone wants to go back to the days where everyone goes to the theater every day, every every Friday. Well, it's just, we're not going to do that. It's not, you know, like some it's people over. will, yeah. but it's not going to be the same kind of thing as it was before. And the art, same thing. I feel like, you know, for some people, this is per- for me. It's perfect. I get to do. I do little tech bandits pieces. Um, I do things for my email of awesome awesomeness, which everyone should subscribe to, by the way. Uh, so it's like a weekly, a weekly newsletter I put out. I would never, ever be able to do the stuff that I'm able to do now because of of AI, uh, mid journey stuff. Otherwise, I'd be hunting the internet looking for images that sort of work for what I need, and then you get copyright issues on that. This way, I get to play and do some Photoshop, and yeah, I think it just opens it up for like a non-artist like myself. It's incredibly free, you know. That's the thing so, that I'm most excited about is the opportunity for some people to approach a space and say, you know what, I never thought that I could really, or uh, uh, an industry, and say, you know what, I never really thought that I would be, I, I, I could lend, my, try my hand at this, and. Well, the technology helps get them in and then yeah, they go off on their own and, and open a new world for themselves because mm-hmm. the AI assisted in opening a door. Adam, that what was your, it. what was your approach before AI? Like, how did you approach the graphic uh, design? Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people David spoke about. I never really, I, I'm not a good artist. I can't, I'm, I'm not good at drawing. I'm not good at painting. I mean, I've never really, uh, I guess, dabbled in it properly, but mm. when I saw Stable Diffusion um, releasing, I thought it'd be fun to, you know, initially just to, you know, make little joke images or something like that. But I sort of yeah. started to realize, hey, I'm not terrible at this. And then started to, you know, work into Photoshop and going, you know, actually, I'm not that bad at this. And so the AI is helping me create and make this stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely one of those people. Yeah. Well, that likewise, I mean, I'm the same. I, you know, I, I, I love playing with new tools and and tech and this one has really stuck with me. I mean, I, it reminds me of, it reminds me, this is how old I am, <laughs> when word processors first started happening. Yeah. The fact that I'm calling the word processors is, is dated myself already. But but people were up in arms because they're saying like, well, now anyone can write a novel. Like, that's a bad thing. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that seems so there should weird be gatekeepers. to now. Yeah. But the reality was, it was like, well, people are just going to write crappy novels and put them out there. Yeah. And they're going to write good novels and put them out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it evens the playing field. And I think there's always an understandable, like I get, you know, I get worked up when people start talking about replacing actors with, you know, with, with, um, with meta humans and stuff. I mean, but at the same time I go like, well, except that if that's, if they're as good, great, then, then I'll figure something else out. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, or maybe I can inform it. I was joking that, you know, Frankly, a lot of these meta humans are they're crappy actors. Let's I'll go and train them how to act. You know what I mean? Train them how to put me out of a job. And they're know? so but, dead but I, behind the eyes too. That's I mean, it. It's like it, I, I call it like soap opera acting. It's like technically there's nothing wrong with it, but there's <laughs> but there's just but emotionally there's just a you know there's just a, a like it, there's just not the time put into the into how they're they're the glint of the eye and stuff. So. Right. It's content. It's not necessarily art. Yeah. So yeah they're yeah. feeding the beast. Exactly. Exactly. Adam, do you have anything else for for Dave? Uh, no, he's I'm all not, yours, buddy. Was, You've uh, got Hewlett. <laughs> I was actually going to share that. I don't know if you've heard this story, David, about uh, the um, American military training AI in in drones. Have you heard this? Mm. 
No, story? what? What? Well, I've, I've heard elements of these things, but what, what uh, specifically? What's the? Uh, there was a specific story. They'd gone to some. I think there's some sort of AI convention in Britain, and this this American. I don't know if it was a soldier or, or some sort of um, big wig, but basically, was saying that they uh, they want to train AI to uh, to put in you know F-16s and, and drones, which we all know is a, it sounds like a great idea. Oh, terrific! Um, oh, terrific! Just a really, really great idea. We definitely should be doing this. Um, but he was telling it, describing the story of uh, how they trained it, and basically, what they've they've trained the AI to to shoot down uh, missiles in in their drones, right. and um, they would basically reward it when it did a good job. Mm. And so they don't just want the AI rampantly killing people. So they have an operator in the background who would push it, you know, it, it would identify the missile and then the operator would push a button and say, yep, good job. That's, that's it. That's a missile. Go, go shoot that thing down. And so then the AI does that. And then it's identifies another missile and sends something to the operator and, you know, waits for the operator to say, give the green light. And, but the operator goes, no, 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 we're not shooting that one down. That's fine. And so the AI then tried to kill the operator so that it could continue getting it through. And so they, oh, shit, okay, we can't have that. So we have to retrain the whole thing. Uh, can't kill the operator now. So same situation, shoots down the first missile and then says, I've seen the second missile. And they say, okay, no, we're not, we're not doing that one. And so now, because it can't kill the operator, it then started destroying the cellular tower so that it couldn't communicate with the operator so that it could just ah. then go do whatever it wanted. So, but this is it. It games the system. I mean, that's, right. it does. Yeah. It and to be fair, the like Guardian movie. reported that uh, the U.S. It Air Force Guardian, right. denies uh, run, running a simulation which AI drone killed operator. But ev even if that's the case, I mean, it, 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 say let's say you believe them, that's that's fine, you know. But how how far are we off from something like that actually being? A, a possible situation and we know that there are people who are at the controls or will be at the controls who are like we got this we built the titanic for frying out crying out loud thinking it was unsinkable it's just a matter of time before you introduce and then what 75 years later we put a submarine down there that's unsinkable as well adds to I mean, the body yeah. count you know it's yeah. wild i think yeah, i mean i mean Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was uh, I was just going to say there's there's there is a level of danger with with AI. There there does there are some safety things that probably need to be put in place. But I'm you know I I'm a bit like you. I'm I'm very much uh, excited about AI and 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 really want to you know um, be at the forefront and the the the, sh the pointy end of of all this sort of stuff. Mm. You know I I. I as soon as as soon as Dali two became available, I was straight on the wait list. I think I got access to it at like four in the morning one day, and I went, "Well, I'm I'm staying up now. I'm just playing with this." Yeah, I mean, I day. pay for Mid Journey. I pay for Chat GPT. Like, I want I want unfettered access. I was one of the first people to have internet access in Toronto and paid a fortune for it just because I was like, I want in on this. Like, this is mm -hmm. my joke is I'm like a week ahead of every everybody, but it's useless because a week is not enough time to do anything right. with it. So it's like I'm like ah, everyone's onto it. Damn it, but. Sorry, just going back to the military thing for a second, though. There was a very interesting, I can't remember exactly the specifics of this. And and so, you know, obviously, giant grain of salt. You're talking to an actor. Um, but but we're ta they were talking about to military folks and saying they were the military folks were saying, look, we have the technology to very specifically target and kill people we want to kill. That can all be done autonomously. The issue we have is that nobody wants to let it do that. I I have a. You know, my perspective on this stuff is obviously changes all the time, but but I feel like the less people we can kill, the better. Um, right now, we're not making decisions about drone and autonomous vehicles and 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 killer drone technology. And so what's happening is the test bed is Ukraine. Like right now, there is more quote unquote research going on about how how they can be used as defense mechanisms, they can be used as offensive mechanisms, how best to, to jam them, how best to confuse them. I mean, like, so, so basically there is a lab of human suffering happening out there because we've not, because we failed to make a decision. As far as I'm concerned, if you could just take out the problem, I'm not saying it's Putin, but maybe, you know, if you could just take out one person with a robot, I'm all for that. I would rather not send in 50 men in a helicopter that may or may not crash, that may or not get shot, that may or not. Like, I would much rather technology be able to solve these problems in an, a more efficient and and less, um, you know, bloodthirsty way. But the pro the problem is I just it's us I don't trust. Yeah. You know, we're sending cluster bombs to Ukraine. America is one of 
what, three countries that haven't signed something to say the cluster bombs are cluster bombs literally blow up, leave little tiny bombs lying around for children to play with. And then, you know, that are supposed to have a one percent failure rate have like a 30 percent failure rate. So in other words, you know, I, I just I feel like humans make mm -hmm. bad decisions mm -hmm. and I feel like I would trust an autonomous vehicle far more than I would trust a lot of the drivers I've seen on the road. Well, that's the thing. Just to, you know. play, to, to play devil's advocate a little bit, would, do mm. you trust the humans who who train the AI to do? No, this? no. And that's, and that's, I think that's where my reticence comes in a lot of this stuff is also, you know, we have to keep in mind that there's bias in data to a considerable, I mean, I, so I took, I took, um, I was using Midjourney quite a lot. I was working on a, on a horror pitch um, that involved um, a black female actress. And I was typing in that I wanted an entomologist because it's an entomologist. And I got just white women in every single, I had, I had to write female. If you write entomologist, you get male. Um, so female entomologist, I got just white women. As soon as I typed black into it, it spat it back at me and said, that's the, with banned words. You can't, you can't do that. And I'm like, so I literally can't convince Midjourney to create the leading role in this movie for, for for me. So I got frustrated, and I went onto Google Colabs, and I ran my own instance of, of uh, stable diffusion. Wow! Yeah. And the stuff I got back is horrendous, like bad, revolting, absolutely oh. revolting. Because there's no guardrails, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden, if you type female into any of your descriptions, they are naked and legs yeah. spread or things coming out of everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's it's really problematic because the bias in our data, the internet is awash with porn, yeah. you know, that is not particularly female, you know, friendly. So these are things that I just don't think that, you know, little nerds in the basement think of when they're making this stuff. So I I, I, I do, you're, you're absolutely right, Adam. I, I say that I'm, I'm rather cavalier about my, well, we should just let machines do it. But I, I feel, again, we have to, Obviously, we have to sort out the human element of these things, I think, before we can really trust the machines. Oh, and, and I don't disagree with you. It's mm -hmm. the, the uh, But, yeah, the, there is that conversation, obviously, going on. And I, I don't disagree with you that, you know, if, if we can get, you know, technology to do it and we only have to kill one person rather than, you know, 100,000, well, that, that is definitely the more efficient option. Uh, or even think... better, rock em, sock em robots. <laughs> just get the Russian robot and then the, the Ukrainian robot. They just beat the crap out of each other. Like that's yeah, we, that. We, we decide that way. Yeah. And uh, pay that's, tickets. That's I'd, I'd pay for tickets for that. <laughs> you know? There's an episode that you are in, uh, in uh, SG1 season 10 called The Road Not Taken. Mm. And Carter gets thrown to an alternate reality. And she has an argument with Hammond near the end. Uh, this is something that's always stuck with me about uh, a Carter, Carter from our reality talking with Hammond from their reality who, when the start, when aliens were revealed and the Stargate program was revealed, all these things that went wrong, they ultimately were using F-302s in uh, the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And Carter was saying, you know, these are mainly for our enemy. These are for, these, these are here to protect all of us against interstellar bad guys. And Hammond says, the threat is still out there. And Carter says, that's the problem. There mm. always will be. Always and that's, that's yeah. always stuck with me. So, I mean, you rock him, sock him, Putin. Someone else is going to come and take his place. Look at what happened with the Taliban, for crying out yeah. loud. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we have to keep that in mind. And I really. Yeah, history. Maybe yeah. we should read a little history. That I, might help people a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. I don't know if you've read that principle of the history repeats every eighty to hundred years or it's, whatever that. Oh yeah, isn't that wild? The, That's um, almost conspira yeah. It's almost like a conspiracy theory. I mean, it's but it's. I think it's simpler than that, and it's just like read the history. Like we literally are making the same mistakes. Oh, you're the enemy of our enemy. Yeah. Let's give you weapons, and then it's like ah, you don't like us. Like it's like. Damn it! We just gave you all our weapons. Strauss how yeah. Strauss how generational theory is what he would refer. Is that to. what it is? Yeah, is that, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's so. it. Yeah. Wow. Adam, uh, my friend, thank you for coming on. Um, Thanks and, for having uh, me. And talking I'm, about I, I this could with sit us, here. So. I could sit here and do that all day. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, great chatting with you, Adam. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I can't yeah, wait cause... to see what else, you, uh, what else you come up with. I'll have to get your, uh, your contact info. We'll send some. I'll you share know, it. If you, if you want to have a go at this non-gate, what would they call it? Uh, Guard-railed mid-journey. Yeah. Uh, not mid-journey. Um, diff stable diffusion. It's it's fascinating. It's uh, mm. not necessarily for the, the not the porn aspect, but the, the <laughs> fact that there are no 
I, I need to now build guardrails for it. I need to build yeah. guardrails for myself so that I can yeah. get something useful out of it. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you, you. Take care of yourself. Be Here's in Adam touch David. with you. Bye-bye. Um, Bye-bye. The, uh, I uh, was curious about uh, what uh, chat GPT would say in terms of me asking uh, a question from it. Let me just change this real mm. quick here. All right. And so I was like, just how just how good is this thing? So I went and asked ChatGPT, do you know who David Hewlett is? And it said, oh, yeah, he's – what did it say here? Let me pull this up real quick. Um, did it make stuff up? I asked uh, no, him a bio and it made stuff up. Really? Yeah. I said, do you know yeah. who David Hewlett is? It said, yes, I'm familiar with David Hewlett. He's a Canadian actor, writer, and director, best known for his role as Rodney McKay in Stargate Atlantis. He also appeared in Traders, Cube, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. In addition to his acting career, he has written and directed several short films and has been involved in various projects within the entertainment industry. Never written a short film. Ah, okay. Written yep. and directed. Interesting. See, that's the thing that yep. frust- that scares the hell out of me is that, oh, it said it. It must be true. Yeah. And so, and the other thing that I hate is it, it God forbid, it, it can't just say yes. You know, it has to, da, 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 da. so just give me simple answers as well. You don't have to give mm. me, you know, 150 uh, uh, characters for, for Twitter. And so I, then I asked it, if you could ask it, him one question, what would it be? If I could ask David Hewlett one question, I would be curious to know about his experiences and insights gained from portraying Rodney McKay in Stargate Atlantis and what aspects of the character he found most challenging or enjoyable to portray and if there is any particular moments or storylines that stood out to him as memorable or personally impactful. That, I I think, uh, right there summarizes 50% of the conversations that you and I have had. And you I you can almost feel the pattern recognition. Right. Like it's like it's gone through and milled through the exactly entire right. world looking for yeah. And then yeah. I asked it, can you please give me one specific question? And it said, certainly. What aspects of Dr. Rodden McKay's personality or character development did you find most intriguing or rewarding? And I'm like, okay, I mean that's that's all right. That's, that's not, not bad. bad. But it's not it, nothing that I have ever done in interacting with this technology has made me step back and go Wow, I've never thought of that. I've never had a brainwave while working with this stuff. It's always, and maybe that's just because I haven't, maybe perhaps I haven't fed it the right information. But I've to me, it. it's saying that it's it's just, uh, it's just spitting out McDonald's double cheeseburgers at me. You it's know? funny, you know, I've heard, I've heard that complaint before. And I, and I, I've got to say, I, I've had a few sort of epiphanies with it. Okay. Like where I've where I've I've said, look, I need I need a name for this. Give me give me some names in the like, you know, you're come trying to come up with a quick title for yeah. something. Give me give me some names for whatever. And it'll make suggestions and then I'll go like, Oh, I didn't mean that, but that's oh, what a great idea. Maybe I'll okay. follow up on that. Again, rubber ducking. I yeah. feel like it's great for throwing ideas back and forth. The other thing that I found, I think what struck me the most about working with chat GPT to start and, and mid journey was that I, I felt like it didn't just, it didn't just change my workflow. It changed my perspective on creativity. Uh-huh. Like what is creativity? Because, you know, like I'll talk to an, you talk to an artist who, who doesn't like AI and says that it's, we've got us, we've got to be paying the people who've made stuff in the past. Right. So, hey, if you're going to do something that looks like a combination of like, you know, Tim Burton and Van Gogh, then then they should be they should be repaid for that. And I said, OK, so let me suggest this to you. What if I come up with a system that can analyze a painting and determine how much of everyone is in this painting? And then we could pay people that way. He's like, perfect. Absolutely perfect. I said, what happens when I run your art through that? He goes, well, you won't get anything because it's all original. I said, no, it's not. No. We are all a product of every piece of art we've seen, every film we've seen, every book That's we've right. read. We are creativity is the process of taking existing things and remixing them. Yep. You know what I mean? Like We're, I, none I, of us are a vacuum. We are all yeah. a part of an intricate system in, in ways that we have have barely begun to technologically quantify. Mm. I just think we have to be really careful when we say things like, I mean, look, I I believe people should be paid for what they do. That's that's fantastic. And I, you know, the gig economy worries me a bit that we're all going to have to have like 50 jobs just to make a a, a, re- a normal living. Yeah. Um, you know, but but at the same time, you got to be careful because if you if 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 you want AI to pay those artists 
for all of that stuff that have inspired whatever it is that comes out the other end, mm -hmm. then you've got to you've got to realize that that's happening in our own heads as well. Our own stuff. Mm -hmm. I, yes, there are some truly original artists out there and people who blow your mind because it's just absolutely new and unique and 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 whatever. But the reality is, for the most part, it's stuff that's based on. You know, it all goes back to those same people smacking their hands up against the stone walls in a in a cave somewhere and telling you know stories mean? around a, around a burning fire. And, and that's it. If we're handing this um, this task off to a system to analyze uh, what art came from where, mm. are we assuming that it's correct a hundred percent of the time? David Hewlett, who well, who wrote too. several short films. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's the th that's the thing. At what point is it? going off on its own dalliance and it's like yeah uh, the that, biggest concern i, I have with that is that. how do you how do you how do you find the truth now i mean yeah. i think we're struggling with that why the hell wouldn't ai struggle with it we're we what is the truth we've got to this yeah. weird part of our of of society where where there's this sort of you know like well there's there's your opinion and then there's the other opinion right. and somewhere in the middle is that no it's not right because if you're making up crap there's no middle ground between what I've, what I know and learned in school right. and what you just freaking made up. Right. There's no middle ground there. I've had this. I've had this argument with a friend. What is truth? And yeah. My understanding. I mean, if if I may s summarize, like my my thinking on that is, truth is that which can be replicated independently across several different systems. Where you can mm. you can go over here and get a result, and then go over here to a completely different system and get a result, and those two things with, that are completely independent of one another, you can put them together and get the same answer. That's pretty concrete. Is it is it mm. airtight? Not necessarily, but that's at mm. least close. But when we're in a place where I think that the sky is green, and if you you know tell me that uh, you think that it's wrong, I feel like I'm being mistreated by you. You know, yeah. we've really yeah. got to be sincere in our intent. Um, and it, be unafraid to offend in the uh, pursuit of genuine truth. Mm, Otherwise, mm. we're going to get lost in so much noise, David. We're never mm. going to claw our way out. And that's my concern is I, I, I feel like, you know, our our, you know, look, I'm a I'm a, you know, Hollywood liberal woke snowflake, whatever. I mean, like I, 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 I get it. My, my world is a, is a different world than other people for sure. My experiences are different from other people. Um, I think there has always been an assumption in my life that my experiences were the right, the right ones. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like, well, that's not fair. It's well, it's not fair in my, like from what, from my, you know what I mean? So they're I right like, for so, you. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, so I think that there's, there needs to be an understanding that yeah. we all have our own frame of reference on this stuff. The other thing that I would say that this is making me question is what is fact? Yeah. Because the reality is memories are faulty. Oh, hum human memories memory is are notoriously recreated. awful. Our, our brain just makes shit up based yeah. on what it thinks happened. Like literally by how you ask a question will change your perception exactly. of the reality of things that have happened. Yeah. So I think that there's just so many neat things. Like, again, being the, the the optimist that I am, I find this stuff fascinating. I find the potential end of society and my job and the film industry <laughs> and, you know, and truth. I find it absolutely fascinating because I, I go like, this is what I, this is what I was born for. Yeah. I was born to be a part of things changing and like, what a wonderful opportunity there is for people who can figure this stuff out. You know, I... <sighs> I both dread things for my kid going forward yeah. and also I'm kind of jealous because I go like, oh, look at the tools you have. Yeah. Look at the look for the, the places you can go. It's you know? not going to be boring. I say that a lot. Whatever it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be interesting. Yeah. May you live in interesting times. That's, and we the, do. that's right. You know, I we live I, in interesting times. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, 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 we're both sci fi fans and I'm sure you can probably relate to this. When chat GPT came, I keep on using that because that's my main frame of reference. When it came out mm -hmm. and I sat down with it for the first time and I talked to it and it responded to me in such a way that I couldn't tell uh, for the other than the fact that it spat it out immediately that there wasn't another uh, uh, educated human being at the other mm. end responding to me. I remember mm. saying to myself, it's here. I have mm. been waiting for this as a sci-fi fan all my life. Yeah. I knew that it yeah. was coming. It was just a matter of time. Now all we have to do is make it sound like Major Roddenberry and you know the technologies that we have, it, you, you don't unring this bell. 
No, so it's no, I feel like not. I feel like Jeff Goldblum and Richard Attenborough, you know, around the table in the Jurassic Park lunchroom saying, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not uh, we thought that it was wise to cross this bridge. Someone was going to cross it. It mm. happened to be us. We happened to be here. What are we going to do about it? Mm. Well, and we're not doing anything about it. I think that's part of the problem. I also worry that, again, shiny thing, shiny thing, squirrel, you know, we're very easily distracted. I mean, you know, we still haven't sorted out the whole, you know, uh, bio CRISPR debate. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole biotech thing out there that will literally change. We are now... Yeah. We are now the masters of our own evolution. That's going to be the, the, ma the major change of the 21st century. We haven't century. figured that out. So yeah. what happens when that mixes with AI? Yeah. What happens when you got AI creating better humans? Yeah. I mean, there's so many issues here that I, I'm absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I'm terrified. And look, this is, if, if nothing else, what I will say to this is what a time for science right. fiction. Oh, you know man, I mean? it's coming to life. Like it's the first stage of engineering, yeah. dreaming. Yep. And I feel like there's so much potential here. We could solve a lot of problems with a couple of really great science fiction books about this stuff. Do you think you we're going to crack immortality? Do you, you think there there are people living a lot uh, who are living today who, uh, if they don't want to die, never will have to? I don't know about today, but I I it does seem solvable. Like, it seems mm -hmm. like given the technologies that are out there, it may not be in the form that like nothing is ever in the form that we think it is. That's true. But, but I I feel like I feel like we're close enough. Like, you know, we're having discussion with the, you know, the League of Doom, as I call my friends, you know, the you know, the little six white men on the screen together <laughs> like a Bond villain. Um, you know, I every week we get together, with my friends and I and we talk about stuff. And 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 we were talking about like grandparents yeah. who are, you know, who. What, what was one of the quotes was like, well, at around 107, she, it started to, she went downhill. Damn. And I'm like, oh, seven. she lived till she was 109 years old. Like that wow. is unheard of. What was yeah. unheard of. Yeah. Now it's, now it's, it's par for the course. So I feel like there's a fantastic, talk about sci-fi. There's a fantastic book, which I should reread because I, I'm sure I misremember a lot of it, but it was a John Wyndham book called uh, The Trouble with Lichen. Um, and it was just a very simple concept. The idea was scientists by accident in the same way that, that, you know, we, we discovered penicillin, you know, some bread went moldy and the guy finds a fungus that, that basically allows people to live an extra hundred years. Wow. Or something like that. It was something, yeah. but it basically doubles our lifespan. Maybe it doesn't make them immortal, but it doubles our lifespan. Retards the aging process. Wow. Now what do we do? Extraordinary. Yeah. But what do we do now? Uh -huh. Because all of a sudden we don't have enough money to feed us. We don't have enough money to house us. We who gets to live a hot, who gets to live two hundred years? Only the people who can afford it. All we have and is time, which is the thing that we have right now. And it's yeah, yeah. It's it like was, in and time, I remember the, as a kid the, freaking yeah. out about this. As a kid, going, "Oh my god, this is like it's true." What do you do? Mm -hmm. I'm married till death do us part. Well, she's gonna murder me before I get older. <laughs> like I mean, <laughs> just to get away from you. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Like you know, we're like what we're sixteen years now. I mean, Jane's not gonna uh, make another hundred and sixty with me. Yeah, I would. I'd have murdered yeah. me. You know, well, I mean, so. that's why I think In Time is one of my favorite movies with Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's wild. It's a Harlan Ellison idea, but man. Yeah, it's... the concept that time is money, literally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you yeah. if you t if you dilute that into that's its purest concept, I, I recommend that film for a lot of people. Mm. I don't necessarily agree with how it ends. It's like, okay, so you've shattered the system. Now what? You know? Yeah, Elysium. I, I can't remember. So everything is yeah. evened out. Now what? What do you do then? Is, every, mm. is everyone going to be impoverished? So it's it's powerful stuff. Well, I've... and Blade, I mean, Blade Runner is another good one yes. because like, sure, they were running around as skin jobs. But but the reality is that, you know, we've now got AIs running around that. I mean, again, we're not general. We're not at the general intelligence stage. I understand that. Like this is still it's still a bit of smoke and mirrors here. It's still a lot of yeah. computing going on. But, you know, how far away are we? And also, does it matter? Like we used to think a Turing test was the solution. Once something could pass the Turing test, that it that meant it was uh, it, it was alive. Well, we've passed the Turing test. Yeah, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find out which some of these chatbots whether they're real or not. That's the thing. So, like I said, you know, if it didn't if it didn't respond to me as quickly as it did, I I wouldn't have been able to tell. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. and now does my perspective endow that thing with life? Mm. You know, what is life? So anyway, mm. I've got a, f a couple of fan questions for you before I let you go. Oh, please do. Please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock Watcher, how's it been going with your 3D printing? And do you still own your 
Prusa? I do. I have two Prusas. One of them is at a Tech Bandit's house right now because okay. he needed to do... One of my Tech Bandits has gone off and is like building robots for like a <laughs> competition and and is is uh, has gone from not believing you could build a PC when he showed up at my house to now building his own PCs and uh, with custom... Cust not just custom uh, cooling systems, which he needs these 3D brackets for that he's been printing, uh, but he's also now doing something called uh, cap modding. Okay. I've never heard of this. I had to look it up. There's only like, there's a few videos on it online, but literally he's soldering capacitors onto, onto graphic processing units to make them run faster. I'm like, dude, you are like- How does that beyond... make you feel that you contributed old, to- old. Okay, yes, fine. But that you, that, no, that's not my point. That you uh, helped contribute to someone pursuing a, a, a rich direction and a, a path in their life. There's not, there, there are a few jobs I think more rewarding than teaching and, I, and sharing knowledge, sharing p potential of an, human beings are, we're nothing but potential, you know? Yeah. And if you can help access, that's, that's so cool that he's gone on and, and, and it, gone this look I, i'm sure he would have anyways i mean the kids oh, okay. are smart the smart lovely kid okay. but 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 it was but again it was it was certainly a part of their education that was frustrating me which is this sort of black box mentality towards like oh it's broken so you throw it out and you buy a new one again from a position of privilege but you know yeah. the fact is that as soon as you're as you're aware that those boxes can be broken open yeah. and that there are different parts that you can understand and that many of those parts will be interchangeable with other parts in other systems that i mean so you know that okay great so i opened some eyes there but i think like one of my favorite always one of my favorite things to hear from people about stargate is that they're now in the sciences because of that yeah you know or that their daughter is now an astrophysicist or a or a yeah. you know an archaeologist or i mean you know those were always the most rewarding things to hear about about a show, you know. I mean, nice when it's a specific to a role like McKay or whatever. I don't. I hope there's not too many McKays out there because they're probably not fun to work with. But, um, you know. But the fact of the matter is, if you've inspired someone into yeah. something so wonderful as yeah. as one of those sciences, I, I there's nothing more rewarding than that. That's that was my desperate attempt. My tech band is my desperate attempt to remain um, somehow relevant because I feel like. <laughs> You know, I I am a I'm a high school dropout who plays geniuses on television. How freaking weird is that? You know what I mean? Like I could not I could not understand or 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 succeed in the existing educational system that I was a part of. I mean, I know a lot of it was me, but there's also a lot of it was the educational system, which basically said, "Oh, you're going to be an actor. Well, then you don't need your math and your sciences." I'm like, but I. I was interested in that. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to choose one or the other? Shouldn't have to. And now we live in a world where we're pulling down all those different pillars of learning and shoving them all together into one giant TARDIS is just so much more useful in our world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I hated school. I've always loved learning. I yeah. didn't realize that the learning I was doing was just another form of education. Yep. You know, it's just not sanctioned by, you know, a government system and curriculums and all that kind of stuff. And it's frustrating that I don't have, you know, I, there are holes in my knowledge because I didn't finish school. But you found but your I, way, Dave, and you have, but I found you my have way. the ability Absolutely. to fill those holes, you know, in other which ways. Which has been amazing. Yeah, yeah, which has just been absolutely amazing. And, you know, again, Stargate, the AI, the only reason why I understand anything about AI and, and poor Lawrence is probably you know, just like tearing his hair out at how wrong I've got a lot of this stuff. But, you know, Lawrence Maroney was, yes. uh, you know, was a Stargate fan yep. who spoke to Brad, did the 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 Stargate AI. Yep. You know, I, of course, being the nerd that I am, goes, yeah, 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 Stargate. Let's talk about AI. We become friends. Yep. Lance has having issues with his with his with his um, his head mouse. Uh, he can't move, so he's using a he's using a head mouse that wasn't working well for him. He goes, "What you know? What could AI do this?" And I go, "I don't know. Let's find out." We talk to Lawrence. Lawrence puts him in touch with stuff. Next thing you know, Google has created something called Game Face, which uses AI and your face to control a computer in a way that hadn't been done before. I mean, it had been done, but hadn't been made as simple as it could the, with this with this media mouse wow. uh, system that they've got. You, you know, like, Stephen Hawking being alive today with some of this tech. That's like, yeah, wild. Well, and his tech, his tech is open source. You could download it. I, 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 I downloaded a system, a bunch of Stargate nerds converted it to Italian for another Stargate fan who didn't wow. have access to it. And you know what I mean? Now nah, it turns out he didn't end up using it. But the point being is that still, like, 
This is Stargate. This is this is the beautiful part about science fiction is that science fiction has the power to change the real world as well mm -hmm. as just our imagination. It's our dream I, phase. You're right. Oh my God. And it's just what a joy to be a part of that. Like yeah. I feel like so freaking like a geek in a computer store. I don't know yes. if that was a, yes. more like a bull in a china shop. But you know, <laughs> you know. General yeah. Maximus, what was it like being back with Joe and Jason on C? <laughs> it was wonderful. I mean, I I say that one of my I think greatest joys of C was 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 getting my friend back yeah. because you know uh, you know Jason and I whether people know it or not had had a had a big argument over this wretched debug movie and and some stupid contractual stuff that had happened and and he was he was really hurt and I was really hurt yeah. and we had a big fight and uh, weren't speaking to each other and you know C came up and I was like no. I said, forget it. I'm like, no, I don't want to be on set with that guy. He doesn't want me there. I don't want to be there. Let's forget it. There's no point. Was why would this ever work out? Got talked into doing it anyways. Talked to the showrunner. The showrunner goes, oh yeah, no, Jason said you're the perfect person for this guy for this role. And I was like, what? He did? He goes, yeah. He said you guys aren't getting along right now, but but you know, but you're but you're a good actor. And I was like, oh yeah, my god, you're bigger so, men. So, I, absolutely. So yeah. you know, so I, I arrive on set the first day that he's there. I walk straight up to him. I'm freaking terrified because you know like we went literally went toe-to-toe -to -toe, and i am a lot smaller than he are and he's got much bigger toes um <laughs> and i said look look i you didn't have, look jason you know my typical grumpy way when i get nervous i get grumpy and i'm like you know jason look i know you didn't have to do that and, and i and i appreciate that thank you and it was like this like weight lifted yep. off both of us and and the next thing within two minutes we're sharing photos of our family again and it was just i was like I, that could have been the crappiest role on the planet. Yeah. It still would have been the best experience because I got him back. That's right. And and getting to hang out with freaking Joe Flanagan again. I like. I mean, you know, poor Joe. Like he just turned to me and said, "Oh God, I'm back in a room listening to you fucking talk." <laughs> because once again, I'm punt I'm making these big speeches, and poor they cut into cut into Joe going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was back. We were, it was ah, oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely Detente wonderful. is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, and also Tropper just did such an amazing job. Yeah. I mean, Jonathan Tropper, who did that that show. God, yeah, man. absolutely. It was beautiful, just beautiful. So, yeah. Uh, Teresa MC, describe Rodney McKay's relationship with Radic Zelenka. Oh man, a book could be written. Sorry, who is Radic again? Right, <laughs> exactly. So, I, you know, Radic was like the little brother that you just. You know, you're just no matter what you're going to find fault with. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is a bit in a weird way. He was he's like a substitute for for Genie, you know, in many uh, respects, yeah. you know, like it's he's just a punching bag for me. It's like I, there was a joke that a friend of mine had I'm not, probably not a joke. It's, it's actually now this is a horrible story about me. But, you know, <laughs> he used to say that he said, like, we get along great until someone else enters the conversation and then you make jokes about me. And I was like, I do. He's like, yeah, it's like you like you're funny. It's hilarious. We all laugh. I said, but do you notice that you immediately turn on me in 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 company? And I realized it was because I have I'm nervous. I get, yeah. you know, like I I got some good material, but I, I got to, you know, I got to take it out on somebody. And I feel like I feel like Radic was that is that, you know, it, you know, I think and maybe I'm just older and, and nicer. But, you know, I used to just think he was a pain in the butt. But the reality is he's he's, I, you know, I think he is he's very good at his job. He's um, he's one of the people that you need. He's the people who make right. allow geniuses to be That's who right. they are. They're geniuses in their own way, but they allow you know that they, they're willing to do the work to let the geniuses shine. If that yep. makes sense, you know I, I, mean? I love the I, probably one of my fa easily one of my favorite Rodney scenes is is in Sunday near the end when he's been woken up by the two scientists who have been screwing around with the technology and yeah. he's and he's cranky because he's been woken up and he's like you know you're not supposed to touch this and they're like mm. well, you did that the last week and then he's like yeah it's because I am me you yeah. are you yeah exactly. and when something goes wrong you don't have to fix it I do and as yeah. he's laying into these people on one hand I'm saying to myself man what an asshole and on yeah. the other hand I'm like he's not wrong. You yeah. know, and that's the thing that I love about McKay is because even though, you know, he's he's a television character, he's pretty darn complete. You know, he's like, I mean, I, I'm not a good enough actor to make things up. So I tend to <laughs> just try to find. Well, I just try to find. Well, there are some people who are just amazing, like a chameleons or just do these. Yeah. Well, Chris Heyerdahl is a perfect example. Exactly right. I mean, Helena Bonham know, Carter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. just people who could just completely transform. I've never been those 
people like I, you know, I'm I'm more than happy to have things slapped on my face and make me look different. But for the but there's definitely for me, it's about finding within me the bits that work for for whatever the character yeah. is. And sometimes that's horrible, you know, and sometimes it's nice. Um, but with McKay, it was sort of a combination of my own stuff and my own insecurities and my own arrogance, I suppose. And also just I I am a nerd. I work with nerds. I am always around nerds, whether it's about whether they're sci-fi nerds or tech nerds or, you know, I, the, you know, that dreaming phase, like I say, right. of engineering is where I, that's where I live. That, that, that tiny little, that little space between the dreaming and the prototyping mm -hmm. is where I, that's where I long to be. And, and, and people are like this, you know, they get obsessed and they get focused, hyper-focused on stuff and they forget the, the niceties of, of, uh, of people and of, of the, the necessities of social interaction being, being uh, pleasant for people. And they just focus on the, they just on the drive problem. right over it. Nah, nah. Yeah. it's irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. Darth Bunny yeah. and Anthony were still waiting on a dog's breakfast part two. Yeah. Oh my so God. Am I. I, well, it's funny, you know, so I mean, dog's I don't know bed breakfast. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, I was, yeah. There was someone, we, Jane, uh, Kate and I were talking about when we wanted to do the dog's bed and breakfast, which was the, uh, <laughs> Which was like a, 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 yeah, kind of a fun takeoff on it. I, it's one of those things that I think it's it's an idea that I'd, I would love to do it again. I yeah. constantly, I'm constantly, it comes up all the time. Yeah. The the biggest issue we have is um, is focus. Like I'm always just doing a million different things. We have Jane, uh, Jane and I have been talking about doing a film together again because we haven't done one for Aww. since then. Yeah. Um, but I'm so obsessed with horror right now that we have like a horror one um what about design so, of the dead is that still floating around design of the dead we actually design of the dead was out with was out with a few people for a while but it never okay. yeah nothing ever i my biggest frustration and one of the reasons why i think i'm i i find myself more and more online is that i hate the development process i yeah. hate it because so many good ideas just go mm -hmm. into this purgatory where you just like you know where things it's like where it's sort of owned by one person and sort of owned by someone else. And this is, you know, it's part of the reason why Stargate is not a, is not up and running again is I think if it was easier, if there were less freaking copyright and ownership issues, you'd, you'd be looking at a new series, That's but um, you know, I, I, I find it very frustrating. I'm not good at it. I like, I go like, here's the story that I want to make. And then I, perfect example. I, I pitched a science show. And and I got the response was like, oh my god, we love it! It's fantastic. Could you do less science in it? And I'm like, some people would go like, oh, okay, well we've got a good positive response. How can we make this wow. work? I go, I'm out, <laughs> and I'm gone because I'm like, I don't want to work with people who don't understand. Yeah, they're not the, getting it. What it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'd rather be on YouTube. I love YouTube is so exciting to me. It's I had an the amazing frontier. discussion. Oh yeah, it, I had an amazing discussion with one of the Tech Bandits kids, um, who's only on Tech Bandits. I mean, I mean, he comes in and out of stuff that he's interested in, but 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 I think he just gets extra game time out of it. Um, <laughs> but but I said, "What's your favorite horror film?" Because we were talking about horror films. I'm going to be a judge at the Fantasia Film Festival this year. Okay, it's one of my favorite festivals of all time because it's anime, sci-fi, uh, okay. action, like just crazy stuff, and it's all just film nerds like me. And I said, so what's your favorite film? And he mentioned this film. And I was like, I don't know this film. And I looked it up and I saw it on IMDb. And it's like, of course it isn't. It's a freaking five minute YouTube short. And I watched it and I'm like, that's your scariest movie? But then you analyze it. You go like, oh my God, I see the element there and the elements here. And that's, and if that's your world, of course right. that's the scariest thing you've ever seen. Yeah. You know? And I suddenly went, oh my God, like maybe we're thinking about this wrong. Maybe we should be making short form content. Maybe we should be, you know, Although content, I hate the word content too. Yeah, it Stories. doesn't sound like it's art. Stories. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, the first thing I thought of when you mentioned that one was Lights Out, the short uh, that came before that film. Yeah. That's a terror yeah. for me. That's a terrifying five minutes. Yeah. Or Mama. Um, uh, uh, okay. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of them out there that that were originally short films, and I think maybe there was a time I think when people used to make shorts to make features on YouTube. So they would go, they'd give, they put their film out on, they put their trailer out on YouTube and they get picked up and they make a movie and it's amazing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Now people make stuff on YouTube because they want to make stuff on YouTube. Right. Because they have freedom because they, maybe they don't have the same budgets, but they, at least they get to do something original. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I spend a lot of time watching horror now because it, mm -hmm. to me, it pushes the bounds of storytelling in a way that, 
that I haven't, I don't see in a lot of other stuff. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's fun, but it's like a Hallmark movie, like a Hallmark <laughs> card. You know what I mean? Like it's just like it's a bunch of great songs and yeah. slow mo and fun, silly things. But it's not a like. I mean, although the last one, I guess the, I like the Rocket. You know, that, that, well, yeah, it has it has something to say, and yeah. that's the thing. You know, I, I I'm I'm regularly asked, David, how do you make money on YouTube? And I'm like, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Find something that you have something to say about, mm. and then monetize it. Yeah, and be well, and be really you? good at it. I it just the, the only the only money that I earn is the advertising revenue. The show is one hundred percent free. That's that was the thing. Do you that do I Patreon wanted. or anything? Do you have nope. like a Patreon or? Nope, I don't really? want their money. If you if you want to give me money, buy a t shirt on dialthegate.com slash merch. Really? And just watch the show. I don't believe in it. I believe huh. that these that these stories that we are archiving from you guys mm. are meant to be. F- fully accessible to the world and for free, and I, oh, I do make not it all think accessible. that it's. I just, I don't think it's appropriate to take money for it. I mean, huh. I, I, and believe me, with the advertising money that we've that I've that I've earned for this, I've put every penny and more back into it. We're working on the transcript archive right now. That software is not cheap. Otter is not cheap. No, Otter I know. I use it cheap. for a bunch of stuff, and yeah. I've got a team of people doing it. And you know, mm. this is. But I think that it's important, and I do mm. it because I love it. And that's, in my opinion where you start. And if you get to make it's, money from it, that's a bonus. It's funny because I, I struggle with this too, especially now. Like it's, it's great when I'm working, it's fine. I just take my money and I put it into the stuff I want to, I want to do when you're not working. And when the industry is in this sort of this free fall, right. that it is right now you go like, how does it, how do you make this work? Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, so I do the coins, I do the, I have a, there's a Patreon, which I started originally was just for parents of yeah. the, kids i was doing the live stuff yeah and then the wonderful stargate community of course comes in and helps out with that as well Oh yeah so i'm not against patreon it's just in in terms of what like i do so yeah but i don't I totally have get walled it. stuff i don't yeah. have any walled stuff i mean i feel like you're giving if you're giving money you have to know it's because you're you want to support stuff for everyone not right for your own you know um you know uh the coins the coins are a little well we'll see the coins, the coins are gonna cool. say we should, so we we're going to so, yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. i'm gonna uh, david's uh, been gen- uh, really generous he's going to get us a, a few and then uh, in future episodes when we have people submitting questions uh yeah, uh yeah. for for guests i will uh yeah, yeah. give the coins out so you yeah, got I'll one handy oh uh, that is so cool they're challenge coins they're with like the stargates with little stargate i call them stargate inspired so i don't go to jail of course um but but yeah so it's just the tech bandits and then what i've been doing is i've got this little oh it's over there um i got a little cnc yes because i this is how this is how not to do a business, run a business. I go, okay, I'm, I get convinced to sell the coins because I got a bunch. I had like 175 of these things left, yeah. and I thought, okay, you know what, fine. Um, so I sell them, but then I'm like, ah, I don't know. It just feels like a lot of money for a coin. It's like 50 bucks. It's like it seems like a lot of money for a coin. Yeah. So I was like, well, so it should have a letter of authenticity. So I write a letter of authenticity, and I'm like, hey, it looks just it's like black and white and right. it's a laser printer. <laughs> I I should get some nice. And right. I should get some nice card stock. So then I get some nice card stock and I print up a nice little color letter of authenticity. And then I go like, but it should like have like a number on it or something. So that so then I'm like, so now every single one of these freaking coins, I have to wedge into my little CNC. And I've got, I've come up with just a, I had Python write a little program of random four digit codes. <laughs> and uh, right. and so I randomly, everyone just gets a random yeah. number on the thing. I then etch it onto this and then I, I send it out to you. So there's, that's the, so as my wife said, or you could have just put it in the mail and sent it. I was like, yeah, but you know, the nerds, <laughs> nerds, we like, we like fancy things. So uh. yeah. David, I'll get you a few to few to give away. I, I really appreciate. It. I think this mm. is a treat, and you know, I'm just waiting for Quentin Tarantino to come around and say, "You need to do my biopic, my life story." I just gotta get my chin out more. <laughs> more that, yeah, yeah. not by yeah. much. So. Yeah, not by much. It's true. I got the chin already. It's true. <laughs> and I shaved. I shaved, and my friends just said, "Like, oh, you got to stop that. Just get the stubble back or something." It's like they said, "I look like silly putty." Ah, uh, no, I got it. Like- you look, you look get, suave. You always look. I got to get some more beard happening. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, this has been a treat as always. Oh, always, um, man, always. Anytime it, you want to talk tech, I'm, I'm all over that. Stuff. I really appreciate it, and uh, 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 please keep us in the loop. And I'm, I've put a, a, a link to the, the Tech Bandits website in, yeah, in the description. Yeah, that'd be, and yeah, the email come, come of awesome by. awesomeness. Yes, um, the email of awesome awesomeness. I'm having so much fun with that because it's, it's like a way of using my whole ADHD 
all over the place stuff to come up with lots of little stories and then funnel them all out to people that I just stories that I find inspiring or exciting. Like this week, I got a bunch of AI stuff and, and uh, um, what else do I have? There's uh Oh, Oh, and then some movie, a little movie review things uh, I've been doing now. And it's, yeah, it's really fun. It's fun. a wide open frontier. Yeah. David Hewlett. I salute you, sir. A pleasure indeed. I love what you're doing, man. This is so much fun. I appreciate you. You take care of yourself, brother. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you. David Hewlett, Dr. Rodney McKay in Stargate (laughs) Atlantis. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate David for his time and Adam for coming on as well and sharing his his content. Uh, And Dial the Gate is brought to you every week for free. We do appreciate you watching. If you want to support the show, go to dialthegate.com slash merch. Pick yourself up a t-shirt, uh, conventions, you know, take it and and uh, wear it proudly. They are so esoteric. If anyone goes to you and says, I know what that is, you've made a lifelong friend for sure. All right, everyone. Thanks so much uh, for tuning in. Thanks so much to my moderating team, uh, Summer, Tracy, Jeremy, Reese, and Anthony, to Frederick Marcoux at Concepts Web for making the show possible. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate, and I will see y'all on the other side.